for our seven-sided project, which is called a heptagon. We're going to do something really special. Now, the first thing I want to point out is one of the things that makes this an unusual frame is the miter angle, uh, 25.714285 degrees. But what we're going to do in addition to this is we're going to do it as a compound, which makes this a triply harder frame than most people are ever going to try. One of the things that you need to remember is when you're doing compound frames, when you go to add the width to length, okay, in other words, the added width and added length, you have to measure at a line parallel, okay, to the top of the rabbit. In other words, you can't lay the stock down and measure from the inside. You actually have to position the material up and then measure between the two flats, the parallel sides between the outside and the edge of the rabbit. Now, in this case, we're going to do a frame for an 8 by 10. We're going to do a landscape format, so the 8 inch is the height, okay? According to the chart, for an 8 by 10 in landscape, our rabbit length needs to be 3 and 11 sixteenths. When I measured across the flats on the molding, it was an inch and a sixteenth, and what we find is that an inch and a sixteenth, we add one inch to the length. So what we need to do is we need to add three and eleven sixteenths, add an extra inch to it. The outside length for our frame sides, according to the book Polygons, is four and eleven sixteenths. If you think back to when we were making the molding, the reason we created the wedge for our stock to sit on was to simplify compounds. And, you know, it really wasn't a lot of work to make this wedge, and hopefully what we did back then, what little bit of effort it took, will greatly reward us now by simplifying the kind of project we're planning on doing. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is we need to set both sides of this jig up for seven sides. We're going to position the wedge right there at the face of the backstop. We're going to set our board on top, our molding on top, and all we're going to do is we're going to clean up the one end. The finish length that I need on my seven frame sides is four and eleven sixteenths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark that first. And then I'm going to add a little bit, okay? The distance between these is going to be so I don't get tear out. This mark right here, I'm going to line right here at the end of the backstop. Now what I want to do, I'm going to position my block on this side. We're just going to butt into this. This is going to be our stop for rough cuts here. Okay, there's no sense in taking that jig off the saw, putting my fence on with a right angle stop. So we butt into this, and here we go. Now, if you remember, I told you there's a good chance we might cut some of this up. Don't let that bother you because what we have to do is to bring a piece of this wedge to the other side anyway. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the one with the mark on it, which naturally will hide itself down here. That's the one we marked. We set our length in the stop. and we're going to cut these all to the same length.
position these point to point just like we do the rest of them. Now there's a frame that for all practical purposes is mathematically impossible with most other tools. And well you gotta love it. The inside opening is eight and a sixteenth. Now right there is a frame that would take hours and hours using other techniques that we could have five minutes in. Now we're gonna show you how you cut a seven sided panel. Like all odd number sided frames. We have nothing parallel. And again, what we have to do to determine the width, we measure across the widest distance between two corners. And to get the height, we measure from a corner to the center of the side opposite it. In other words, we know that this line is square to that line. On this one, our height is 8 and a 16th. And our width is about eight and a quarter. That, that always is the case, by the way. Your width is always going to be larger than your height when you do one of these. Set that. Now the first thing we're going to do is square up an end. We're going to flip it. I think I'll make this distance the height. Okay. Let us see. Clean up the edge. We're going to center the panel over the opening, just like we did on the Pentagon. We're going to mark every place where we see corners. Now, one of the things on seven sides is you're going to have two hidden corners, corners you can't see. Okay, we'll show you how you get around that problem. The uh, first time I ever did a seven-sided frame and somebody at one of the woodworking shows asked me to cut a panel to go in it, to be real honest with you, I didn't know what the angle was. One of the things that makes this a lot easier than other tools is since this is run through the saw and cut, it actually establishes a perfect reference where the saw cuts. So if you get yourself lost on a project, all you have to do is swing the backstop forward until a side ends up parallel to the cut the saw makes. Now what makes seven sides really neat is we cut seven pieces two times. We did 14 total cuts on this frame. The angle to do the seven sided panel is the 14 line. 12.857142 degrees if you want to get picky about it. But all you have to remember for the panel you set up on the 14. You always start with the side with the two marks. Okay, notice a mark here and a mark here. Those go against the face of the backstop. You slide the material over and you line your mark at the edge. Now, what's going to happen as we make a cut, we're going to rotate clockwise so that that cut edge sits here on the backstop. We do the next cut, that cut comes to the backstop. And this is a very, very easy way to work. We can actually make a seven-sided panel in six cuts because we already have one side already done. I'll show you what I mean here. Do the first one. 
rotate. Here's your seven-sided panel. Finer and frog hair.